in this example, I have f plus g of x, f plus g times uh, of x. So again, all that's saying, ladies and gentlemen, is to add my two functions. I would prefer, when you guys are adding and subtracting, to put parentheses. It's not really necessary in adding, but it's definitely necessary in subtraction. However, I know that all I'm simply doing is I'm just adding my two functions. That's all I'm doing, just adding the two functions. Now, I really don't need my parentheses, though, but I just used it so you guys could see. All you're doing is taking f of x plus g of x. That's what this says. All right. Well, I don't really need my parentheses here. And I can just combine here. I have 2x squared um, x plus x, I'm sorry, 2x squared plus 2x minus 4. Does everybody feel OK with that? OK. And the next thing is I need to do my domain, because I asked you guys to do the domain. So when you look at the domain of this problem, well, you look at the restrictions we talked about. Is there any restrictions for this? Is there any, is there any number that's in the denominator? Is there any denominator? No. no. Is there any radical? No. So guess what? The domain is going to be all real numbers. OK? The next problem, or the next one, is going to be subtraction. Again, I would highlight putting them in parentheses. 2x squared plus x minus 3. Now you're minusing x minus 1. The reason why this is important is because I'm not just subtracting x. I'm subtracting x minus 1. So I have to make sure I apply my distributive property. So really, you're subtracting an x, and you're subtracting a negative 1, which is the same thing as adding a 1. So therefore, my function turns into 2x squared. x minus x is just going to be 0x, which is 0. And then, um, what the heck did I do then? Then negative 3 minus a negative 1 is going to equal a negative 2. Again, we look at our restrictions. Do we have any restrictions going on? No. So therefore, there we go. Um, in the next one, in the multiplying, here, all we're simply doing is multiplying one expression, 2x squared plus x minus 3 times x minus 1. If you guys have gone through my instruction, I do not like multiplying using FOIL when I have larger than a binomial times a binomial. So the way that I have taught this is by using the box method. You don't have to use the box method. If you want to use FOIL, that's perfectly fine. But I just like how the box method organizes everything and keeps everything kind of clean. So I'm going to do x minus 1 and 2x squared plus x minus 3. So in this example, uh, multiply, I have 2x cubed plus x squared minus 3x. 2x squared times negative 1 is a 2x squared negative x plus 3. I'm actually going to kind of ran out of a little space here, so I'll just write my answer now down below. So I see that these are like terms, and these are like terms. So my answer is 2x cubed minus x squared minus 4x plus 3. All right. Again, do we have any restrictions? No, there's no restrictions. So ladies and gentlemen, the first problem, or the first three problems, I'm just going to write all or not. Oh, let's do a negative infinity to infinity. The first three problems, there's no restrictions. None at all. OK? Um, for the next one, for the next type of restrictions, um, what we want to do is we got to use division, right? Well, now we know with division, we're going to have a denominator. So for my division here, um, let's do f of g of x. All that simply means is taking your f of x and dividing it by your g of x. 2x squared plus x minus 3 all over x minus 1. Now, to simplify this, we could divide this, could, couldn't we? We could divide this by using what? Synthetic division, Synthetic division since, the since the denominator is a binomial. We could also, um, Anthony, we could also do this by long division, correct? We could also look into see if we can simplify this by factoring. You always want to look into factoring. But before I even go any farther, 
my domain, what value, what number cannot be in my domain? One, right? Because all you simply do is set your denominator equal to 0. And therefore, so my domain is going to be all real numbers such that x cannot equal 1. So before I even get into simplifying, I can easily identify my domain because I know I can't have a, a 0 in my denominator. Then you could use division. And if you want to use division, that's perfectly fine. Um, however, I'm going to go to using my factoring skills. So if I was going to factor this, um, I'd basically look at what two numbers. Um, so if I was going to factor this, I would say, well, if I was going to do this in my head, to give me 2x and x, it'd have to be 2x. Or to give me 2x squared, I'd have to have 2x and x. My two numbers have to multiply to give me negative 3. So therefore, the, multiple, the factors for negative 3 would be negative 3 and positive 1, or negative 1 and, and negative 1 and positive 3, right? Well, by doing just a quick little, since the middle term is positive, I could say that this would be positive 3 and negative 1. You could also use the long factoring techniques if you guys need them. But let me double check my answer. So just make sure this works. And yes, that works like the factored form, does it not? Yes? No? Anybody not agree with me? Huh? Sorry? Hold on a second. So you guys can now see what divides out the x minus 1. So therefore, your simplified answer, let me write this over here, 2x plus 3 um, times x minus 1. So therefore, my simplified answer is 2x plus 3. So you guys just should be familiar with factoring. You should, whenever you see a rational expression, you should know how to factor. And the last one we're going to do, g of f of x. I'm doing a lot of these examples. You don't have to do every single one for each one of these. But now, all we're doing is taking x minus 1 over g of x. Now, do we already know what, we already know what, um, if we set this equal to 0, if I say 0 equals 2x squared plus x minus 3, can we solve this? Do we already solve this? Yes? What's the factored form? So 0 equals 2x plus 3. Actually, let me do it over here. We could really set this equal to 0, right? Because that's your denominator. That's that factored out. So therefore, we'd say x. Um, equals negative 3 halves, and x equals 1. So the domain for this is all real numbers such that x cannot equal negative 3 halves and positive 1. Then I go ahead and rewrite this in its factored form. Interesting. Very interesting correlation of grades. Therefore, the factored form of this is 2x plus 3 times x minus 1. Those divide out, and you're left with 1 over 2x plus 3. OK? Yeah, if you, if you divided those using long division, you'd get the same answer. You'd get the same.